Catchy OS is the distro with the most hype going into the next year of the Linux desktop. It's managed to fill in the shoes of clear Linux with its out-of-the-box performance optimizations. It's an Arch-based distro, so you get all the benefits of the AUR, all the documentation that's in the Arch wiki, and contributions that Valve is making to Arch since the Steam decks are also running an Arch-based distro by default. And given that so many people, especially so many new Linux users, are having their first experiences on Arch-based distros, I actually think that distro hopping is becoming more of a rare phenomenon as a result. Because I generally consider Arch to be something like the end game of distro hopping. I mean, technically Gen 2 or Linux from scratch is more end game because then you get to choose your own init system and you're compiling all your packages and your kernel yourself. But Catchy OS is also stealing some of that thunder with compiler optimizations too and making the margins of improvement from compiling all of those packages yourself that much smaller. And I've been so impressed with Catchy OS that I actually installed it with KDE Plasma on my laptop to give it a bare metal test, and I'm a fan so far. It's a great computing experience, and if it continues to be so well maintained, I think Catchy OS will probably become my personal benchmark for desktop performance comparisons between Linux distros. But I was shocked when I read the Christmas slash New Year blog post on catchyos.org and got to the part where they mentioned that they are working on a specialized server edition of catchyos with optimizations for web servers, databases, and other more server-specific workloads. So the first surprise here with catchyos specifically is that this distro is so new and has such a relatively small team that's maintaining an extremely popular desktop distro that you would think they'd be too busy to even pursue something like server distro maintenance, which has very different challenges. You gotta think server users are likely using very different programs on very different hardware or in virtualized environment compared to what the desktop users are doing. Catchy OS is also a rolling release distro like most Arch-based distros, which makes it less appealing to a lot of server users. So with a rolling release distro, you're getting all the latest updates for software as soon as it's available, not just security updates, but feature updates as well. And the thing about new features is that they tend to break things. And this is where the joke about Arch comes from if you're a fan of Linux memes where, you know, the Arch users are having to constantly fuss with fixing their system after an update breaks something, while the Debian, Fedora, or other stable release users get to actually enjoy using their computers. Updates are less likely to break a stable release system because the software updates are more thoroughly tested and there's just generally fewer updates in general. So you typically are just getting critical security patches for the software and none of these features that you don't really need that might break something. Now on a desktop, stable release can be pretty annoying because there just isn't gonna be that much software that's available to you or especially not the latest versions of software. You're only able to get older versions. And if you're using newer hardware, this can actually mean that the distro won't work very good or at all on your new laptop due to not having the drivers for your graphics card or some other component available to it. There's also the community repo aspect, which personally is my favorite part about Arch-based distros. The AUR, you know, Arch user repository has basically every piece of software you could possibly want to install on Linux. There's just too many programs out there for them to all be maintained in one official repo. So that's where the community repo comes in. And that's also where we have growing pains of success due to the AUR's convenience that have been showing lately with the different incidents of malware being distributed in the AUR. You know, that's the downside to the convenience of community repos and the success of the Linux desktop in general is that hackers come in to ruin nice things. But even though the AUR does pose extra risks and rolling release distros are more likely to have an update that breaks your system, in the event that that happens, only your personal computer is affected, and so only you are affected, assuming that you're not sharing that computer with other people. But the risk is much greater on a server, because depending on the service you offer, you might have sensitive information of your customers or your clients that gets leaked now because you installed a poorly vetted program to that server. 
Now, of course, the AUR is not enabled by default and it warns people about the reputability of packages installed from there, but if Arch-based servers start becoming a trend, then a data breach is bound to happen at some point because somebody is going to install a poorly vetted AUR package on their server thinking that it was a good idea. And even if there isn't a data breach, the real reason that people use these stable distros for servers is to avoid system downtime in general, because downtime equals lost revenue if we're talking about a business server. Each minute could equal thousands of dollars down the drain, and for those kinds of high revenue online services, there's so much money being poured into maintaining the uptime of that server in terms of infrastructure, CDNs, employee payroll, et cetera, that choosing to use anything that is not a stable distro, choosing to use a rolling release distro, especially one like Catchy OS, is just such a hugely unnecessary risk to these big companies offering online services. And besides Ubuntu and Debian being stable release distros, the real thing that makes them so stable is that virtually any piece of software that you would want to run in Linux on a web server, you know, database software and routers and stuff like that, was mostly developed and tested on those distros, Ubuntu and Debian specifically. Now, Arch Linux and Catchy OS are fairly similar to Debian in terms of their architecture. I mean, they both use systemd, like there really just isn't that much difference between them other than the fact that the Arch-based distros have newer, newer versions of packages. Um, so you could, in theory, run any app on Debian on you know Arch and they would work entirely the same. But again, that huge risk of downtime in order to go with that, the juice would have to be worth the squeeze. You would have to get some type of benefit from actually running a catchy OS or you know anything other than Ubuntu or Debian in production. Now, it's not completely out of the ordinary for more niche experimental OSs to be used by companies because Netflix, for example, they developed a customized free BSD OS in order to run on their content catches on their CDNs. And Netflix actually maintains one of the world's fastest CDNs, which is a necessity since they serve up something like 15% of global internet traffic. And in the FOSDEM19 talk, which I'm going to link to in the description of this video, the guy giving the presentation about the Netflix CDN mentioned that they process over 100 terabits per second at peak capacity. And mind you, this was recorded back in 2019. So they're probably even busier now. And of course, the content that Netflix is serving up is HD video. So you need massive amounts of storage, RAM, CPU for encoding, and bandwidth to serve all of that content effectively to their viewers. So to build a CDN like Netflix and not go bankrupt, you have to figure out how to squeeze every bit of performance you can out of that infrastructure that you've already paid for. And even if you can get a 1% improvement on processing 100 terabits per second, that's still thousands more customers that you're gonna be able to serve at that scale. And so a customized free BSD OS, that ended up being the solution for Netflix. And check out that FOSDEM19 talk if you're interested in how the development of that OS took place. And luckily Netflix shared a lot of their optimization and research with the BSD community, which has also been able to permeate into the greater FOSS community. So a similar thing could happen with Catchy OS. It's not completely out of the question. And if they can provide a marginal improvement in things like database queries or router speeds, then I could see Catchy OS sneaking in as one of the go-to server distros, at least for advanced users. I mean, I don't see it getting as popular as Ubuntu or Debian servers, but I could see it serving a little niche like Alpine Linux does. You know, Alpine is used a lot in development environments because of its small size. And it also gets some production use, especially if you have constrained resources, again, because of its small size. So Catchy could fill in a niche like that, where it's flaunting its speed instead of small size. 
And again, if this experiment with CatchyOS is a success in providing a noticeable improvement to the performance of web apps, then we could see this research getting shared with the broader Linux community and the web developer communities. And then the people who turn their nose up at the very idea of using CatchyOS in development might one day get the benefits of this research applied to the packages that they're running in their more conservative Debian servers. You never know until we actually try it. But I wanna hear from you all in the comments below. Would you run a catchy OS server for your production web application? Do you think that the speed increases would be worth it? Or would you just lose sleep at night worrying about the security of your box? If you enjoyed this video, please like and share it to hack the algorithm and check out my online store, base.win, where you can buy awesome merch like this base.win tee or accessories for your phone or laptop. 10% store-wide discount when you pay with Monero XMR at checkout. Have a great rest of your day.